running down on the bottom so that it clicked on a virus that it was protecting it. Was oh. Okay, here we go. Now we've got the city council. I just back out with it. We have to go out one more step. Maybe. Yeah. Hey, who's trying to say this? I mean, you've been at the rest of us fairly. All right, I'll see you I have. I have. Let's go. We're going to start the workshop. Okay. The first number of business is a public hearing uh, regarding the conditional transfer of property located in Solon Township uh, and proposed to come to the city. Cedar Springs, the address is 13900 Lake Creek Avenue. So we'll have a public hearing. Um, I'll make some comments. What they want to do is they, uh, it's an, actually the uh, second part of our 425 agreement area. So it's laid out on how you can request annexation. You basically got to make a request for water and sewer services. They did. Uh, Sullivan Township was notified. So we're going to have the public impact on it. They want to put up a retail building there, and time is of the essence. They want to get going on it. Uh, and they'll be, if everything goes well tonight, then they'll be at the Planning Commission in September with the site plan. So I've got all the conditions of the development agreement uh, in Phase 2 of the 425 agreement. And for the agreement, we will pay Solon Township 2.5 mills, the equivalent of 2.5 mills. So we'll have that. That will be the first thing that we'll act on. And then we'll go through our consent agenda, the minutes, <coughs> as well as the checks. And then under correspondence, we have five items that's in your packet. Minutes from the Community Building Development Team. 18th annual video report, the NML annual meeting notice, the right place update, and Kent County Health Department's health management newsletter. In terms of unfinished business, the first on that is the policy for uh, inspection of assessing records. This is uh, something that was put together at the request of our assessor. Uh, the state is going around and auditing uh, assessing functions of various municipalities, and this is one thing that they uh, look for, so we're getting ahead of it. We already do what this policy says as a matter of practice, so just putting it on paper. So this would be a second consideration. Uh, the next is a second consideration for a license agreement between uh, Yankee Zephyr Racing Promotions and the city. If you remember last year, they, uh, this organization had their first snowmobile drag race on our property uh, at the end of uh, West Street. This year, they want to uh, move it to the west of the end of that property. And there's plenty of room that would not interfere with the area that's used by the Wolverine Flying Club. They are also going to bring in a, a snow cross event as well as the drag race. They also are going to smooth out uh, a portion of the property so they can have a nice even surface for drag racing. What they intend to do is till down about four to six inches and then just level it out. I ran that by uh, our environmental attorney and, and passes muster because we have to maintain a, a, the integrity of a 12-inch cap on those old buildings. So based on how well it went last year, I would recommend the council that we approve this agreement for the upcoming years. Next is uh, a discussion regarding waiving fees for sidewalk display and other permitting fees in the downtown. I don't have a lot of information on that. My understanding is going to be a business owner that will speak to that at the appropriate time. Under new business would be taking action on the conditional transfer of property within the township to the city of Cedar Springs at first consideration. Again, that's 
who will be discussing that at length during our public hearing. And the developers will be here tonight if there are any questions. So I would recommend, obviously, that we accept uh, that property and waive policy clubs so we can get this moving forward. Next is a motion to waive policy 12 again to act on agreement between the Cedar Springs Fire Department and host testing specialties uh, at the first consideration. The fire Department has gone and solicited bids for host testing. They've been doing it uh, themselves. However, uh, it's becoming a little bit problematic. It takes a lot of the training meeting times. And so this is uh, probably a, a much easier way to do it. We get it done in a day or two. Just throw a little bit more money. So I'd recommend approval of that. The next is a discussion regarding uh, amendments to the Planning Commission bylaws. That was discussed at length at the Planning Commission. They formed a, a subcommittee to come up with ideas for amendments. Uh, it was approved by the Planning Commission after. Uh, discussion and they're recommending that these amendments be approved by the City Council and this will be a first reading. Next um, would be a motion to approve Ordinance 190 which is uh, in essence uh, a HUD uh, planned unit development site plan for the, the B2 district, the downtown area. Thoughts being at the, at the uh, Planning Commission meetings, this gives the Planning Commission much more flexibility in working with the property owners down there in terms of making their buildings look good. Uh, and it really came to light when we were working with the with Cedar Springs Brewing Company on their building. We, we were a little bit handcuffed. Uh, they came with some, with some great ideas and we had to really work work on it to get what they want. So the, the underlying zoning would still be there, but this gives us some flexibility in, doing, in uh, working with the, the property owners and developers. So that would be a first reading. Uh, the next would be another ordinance, uh, Ordinance 191. And that's to amend section 10.1 of chapter 10, article 1 of the city code of the, of the city of Cedar Springs for the first reading. Basically, there was, as our ordinance right now reads, it, it conflicts with the building code. Basically says that certain things uh, are not uh, applicable in a mobile home park. And that's not the case by state law. And I've uh, also attached a letter from the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, which points out that the state construction code authority does extend to mobile home park. So we want to clear up any confusion, take that out. And it, instead of it saying, previously it said, uh, however, this section shall not apply to mobile homes placed in a property licensed mobile home parks. It will now read this section, uh, this provided, however, that all ordinances, codes, or regulations otherwise applicable to mobile home parks or mobile homes within mobile home parks, including but not limited to the provisions of zoning ordinance, construction code, property maintenance code, and public health code, shall apply to mobile home parks and mobile homes within mobile home parks to the fullest extent permitted by law. So it's just uh, bringing some clarity to that and getting us aligned with state law. So I would recommend that we uh, approve that when it comes for a second reading at the next meeting. But this is just the first reading and, and no action is necessary. Uh, the next is a purchase <coughs> of a biochemical oxygen demand incubator for the wastewater treatment plant and also a motion to waive policy 12 so we can act at, on this at the first consideration. We were bids received and the DPW director is recommending uh, a company to provide this service in the, in the, in the 
price of uh, three thousand seven hundred eighty dollars. So I would recommend two things. Number one, that we waive policy number twelve, and also to uh, recommend the approval of the uh, company as identified by the DPW director. Next is a motion to waive policy 12 to act on SCADA bids at first consideration. Uh, as you know, this was, we had picked uh, Fishback to act as our consultant. They uh, put together specs, they reviewed uh, the bids against the specs, and are making a recommendation for uh, a company that we should contract with to develop this system. And uh, Tom will expand on what a SCADA system is and what it does and why the recommendation was made. And then it's on to reports and my management report. See, it submitted a, or actually had told Trout Unlimited that they would super allow work done on city property in terms of wetlands. It was going to be part of a bigger project they were doing across the area. The city had committed, uh, I believe it was $2,000 towards a grant match. It was going to be work done in North Park as well as uh, on our property behind the fire barn. Uh, unfortunately, Trout Unlimited did not get the grant. They weren't successful, but the uh, state suggested strongly that they reapply in the new grant cycle. So at the next council meeting, I'm going to be uh, bringing forward a request from Trout Unlimited that we again offer a letter of support for their grant and support in terms of uh, financial in the amount of $2,000. So I think it's a good use of our money. Uh, would be very beneficial for a lot of reasons. Next, uh, the Solon Township City of Cedar Springs Fire Department study that kicked off on July 30th. Uh, the representative of the consulting firm was up, met with uh, myself, uh, our fire chief, fire chief from Solon Township, the township clerk, and two other uh, Solon Township individuals that were representing the, the fire board. So I just kicked it off talked about um, the objectives, the approach to the study, possible outcomes, proposed timelines, and just answer any questions that the group might have. Uh, it was a very candid discussion. I thought it was a very good start to the process. The next step is that the consultant will be here on August 15th to interview select members of the fire department. I believe he's starting with uh, the officers in the fire department. He's already, the day he was here on the 30th, 30th he met with the uh, respective fire chiefs to go over various things. So that was a good kickoff meeting. They're making progress. Probably will not hear anything in terms of the report until November, December area. Cedar Springs Mobile Estate. <coughs> their license to operate their mobile home park expires September 30th, and they're up for a three-year renewal. In order to get a renewal, they have to get a recommendation from the city, a favorable recommendation from the city. Uh, obviously, at this point, we're not, I'm not in the position, nor is PCI, to provide that favorable recommendation. We did have a meeting with the owner of the park. Uh, her husband and their attorney uh, from the city. There was myself, our code enforcement officer, and two people from PCI. And we were, you know, pretty. I was pretty blunt and said that we're not going to give a favorable recommendation until they're in full compliance with all building and code enforcement areas. Uh, we've been trying to work with them <coughs> with limited results. So. We made it clear that we weren't going to, I was not going to recommend renewal of their license just based on them making some progress. Because if we do that, then we really lost our leverage for three years. So, um, 
we at that meeting we had, we had a good discussion. The code enforcement officer gave her gave the owner a list of some items to get worked on right away, as did uh, PCI in terms of the building code. I told her we would follow up on a weekly basis. So the first week, and I don't know how it happened, but the building uh, or the code enforcement officer said it got worse. There had been no progress made. In fact, they regressed. Uh, PCI sent out requests to inspect 20 of their rental units, and uh, they sent those letters out last. Wednesday, and as of yesterday, they had not heard anything back from the park. So, probably one of the more concerning things is that uh, they've had three uh, sanitary sewer overflows in the last couple of months. So, I've asked Tom to communicate with with the DEQ as well as the county health department because they're also. They're also requiring us to give them a favorable recommendation on the water and sewer. I've got to talk some more to the state, but our responsibility ends at, at, at the meter. We provide the water, and then it's their system, and the same thing with the, with the sewer. So there's buildings inside the park of the own system. So I've got to flesh that out. I did have a discussion this week with uh, a lady from the, the state, and uh, Basically, what happens if they don't get a, a recommendation for renewal of the license, they can't operate. And then, then it becomes a criminal offense, and that state department then will refer it for prosecution. Now, the, the lady I talked to said there are have been situations where, depending on, on the circumstances, they might give 30 to 60 days if somebody's close. So, uh, I don't I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, I've talked so will about all those residents be required to move. They can't they can't live there if it's not okay. if they don't have a license, and that's the worst case scenario is that you're going to displace potentially displace a lot of people. And I've already put out some feelers, and there's just not a lot of options. To be clear, we're not displacing them. No. no <laughs> Helping. Well, uh, we're saying we have to comply with the law, and yes. you can't no. operate a facility that has substandard, unsafe yeah. housing. No, no. We're not. We're not displacing them. Right. You know, but they would be displaced if they didn't right. get their license. Right. And, and there's just really a dearth of available housing in Kent County. But to be clear, the city is not going and nope. evicting. <laughs> Talk to, the, to the, clear. talk to our code enforcement officer. We're going to meet with our uh, with the city attorney that handles the code. Well, we, we want to talk it out with him. Uh, what we're probably going to do is let this licensing thing work its way and not do any citations for any of our our. our code or our city ordinances because we don't want to have actions in two different arenas. Sure. Because it could be that if, if we wrote citations for uh, city ordinance violations, then a judge might say, well, you know, we'll give you 60, 90 days to to make the make the necessary repairs and adjustments, and that might be uh, in conflict with what we might get through the state. So we're, going to, we're right now leaning towards not taking any action in a local court until we figure out if they're going to be in compliance uh, and get their license. So that's ongoing. But we're continuing to notify them that there are problems. Like, oh, yeah. do, well, we're documenting the problems. Well, you know, our, our code enforcement officer was in law enforcement for 27 years and retired as a lieutenant out of Grand Rapids Police Department heading up a unit. He knows how to make a case. Okay. He's, he's doing, yeah, and that's and that's. A, I just want to assure you because that's a really good thing. We've had talks about that. He documents, 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 and uh, PCI is keeping a track record also. Yes, it is. And I'm keeping my notes of conversations and meetings, so we'll have we'll have that because uh, with.
without a doubt, if we don't provide a favorable recommendation, we'll get sued. And I've already given a heads up to our city attorney that we're doing that. But we got uh, we got to just follow through on it. Won't be the first time. Nope, nope. A reminder that the Michigan Michigan Municipal League annual conference or con convention is September 16th to 18th in Traverse City. If any council members are interested, mm. get a hold of myself or Linda and help you get meeting? registered. Right. Last week we had a uh, representative from Rural Water in to do a weight or a great study. He was here two days, thought he was going to have to be here four. And the reason he wasn't here four days was he said he were really, really prepared for it. So hats off to with Deb Burnett and, and uh, Deb Fredrickson for having all of that, or Fredrickson for having all of that information around and ready. Um, as we suspected, that he's going to be recommending some rate increases. Uh, we don't necessarily agree with the amount he would be recommending, but he's going to send us his final reports and his Excel spreadsheets and then Deb and I will go through those. But, uh, yeah, it's inevitable we're going to have to raise our rates to support our system. So it's just an issue right now is uh, how much. And the, the rural water representative will be here probably sometime over the winter to address council and go over the study in depth. Uh, finally, I'm working with Hanson Realty, which uh, owns the property that this flight pack uses. Working on them, they're wanting to exercise uh, the option on parcel C that was in that development agreement. And that, that was a four acre parcel. They are asking that we increase that to from four acres to 6.4 acres. So we've been working with getting the agreement uh, in place, and so that should be coming up maybe in September, if not in October. So that I think that's a, a very positive sign because that, that property would be directly south of, south of the access road that goes into the wastewater treatment plant, and it would go from the, our east boundary up to our easement line for that roadway uh, extension of, of uh, West Street. So I think that when that happens, that's going to make our grant request with the uh, EBA much stronger because now we can say we have property sold in there and we have to service. So that that I think is a very positive thing. Plus, it just shows that. Hanson Realty Display Pack wants to be part of the community. They're looking at staying here. They've got that for future expansion. So uh, I, that's a very good sign. And after that, it's uh, the various department reports that they'll report out uh, at the conclusion of the meeting. So that's the end of it. Yeah. Any questions? I think we skipped nine and see. Intentionally? Uh, okay. Which one was that? This trucks. Okay, maybe we did. <laughs> <laughs> they were too big anyway. So, yeah. Too big anyway. Bottom line, we're, we're going to need repairs to our trucks, trailer engines. Good news is one of them is a county engine, which the county will pay for. And uh, the chief has gotten quotes, and he'll discuss his recommendation during the meeting, and certainly I would support his recommendation. We can't have these nagging repairs out there. We've got to get them taken care of. Is this that super awesome steam truck that we have? <laughs> <laughs> the super awesome steam truck? Yeah. Steam truck. <laughs> I didn't get a quote on that. No. no. Is that what you said about it? No, when we had our workshop, the that was our, our sample. I think hundred thousand dollars steam powered steam fire, powered fire yeah. engine. So the money is available for those repairs. I I have a question. Um, I see that 
you know, and I know that there had been ongoing discussion about the fact that we need a new SCADA system for our water. Right. Um, I'm just not sure why it, why we would waive policy 12 on that. I feel like we've known about this. This has been coming. I don't understand why there's a rush and there's no time to allow public to come in and. It's one of those things that the sooner we can get it done, the better. We've been kind of babysitting the system and for a long time. It's cool. And I'm, yeah, and I'm not even, I'm not even debating that we need one. Because right. I feel like that's a, that discussion is over. Sure. But I just, if I, I think that, oh, of course. The, uh, the skate of the, the actual water tower that we did during the storm. Oh. Okay. Actually. Fried some of the components for the SCADA system. We're, we're kind of well, there it is. So now, okay. okay, well, that, that makes a lot more sense then. It's simply yeah. it's either that, emergent. Either that or we purchase a $500 battery backup that was fried in the. Okay. In the well, then that, that makes sense. I just I knew that it had been on a burner and I didn't understand why we were doing it now, but that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, I think you skipped the apron uh, one. Point the that was under the mayor's business. We're also looking for someone to serve on the Parks and Rec. I've talked to a few people. Uh, board. The board for the Parks and Rec board. So, if you have someone, let me know. With, um, I'll just hang out. Do they need to be a city resident or a uh, like area city? City, city resident. Bob's a city resident. He's retired. I mean, he's got plenty of time. Conflict. I think you want someone not on the council? True. He's not. I love it when you volunteer. I have two things. Um, I'm going to request to amend the agenda to add two things. Um, and obviously, they only get added in the second. The first one would be under unfinished business. And that would be E to have a discussion and a vote about where to hang the memorial medallion, because that seems to be we voted to hang it, but there seems to be some lack of clear understanding or whatever about like where in this room it needs to be. So it's going to be E. E under unfinished business, and I don't think we need to raise the policy 12 on that, because I think we have talked about that medallion in great detail. So the location on the wall should not be. <laughs> I think we need to decide which wall too. Right. And I think that's the big stumbling yes. block. So be thinking about that before we get to here. And so I'm going to um, ask to amend the agenda for that. And then I'm also going to ask to put under new business item I a discussion on the relocation of the current fire barn. This is the thing that keeps percolating up. And I have read the minutes of the Planning Commission and looked at their maps for the things moving forward on the library, and it's pretty evident that this is the thing we need to at least begin to have a conversation again about. It would be strictly a discussion item. We also have a request from the library to speak to us also with the so do we want to amend the agenda to add these folks, or are they well, speaking in? Mm -hmm. I second. Yes. So, <laughs> it be done during meeting. I don't think it's being done. Okay. okay. No, okay. Bring it up to everybody. The question so is, are they speaking during the public comment section, or do we need to amend the agenda to add them so they have extended time? They are requested to be on the agenda. Got it. So do we need a, I, we need mm -hmm. a. Well, that's when we, once we go into session, we'll, we'll modify the agenda. Jay. So, Jay, for the library. Yeah. Should the library and the CDGT be two separate agenda items? So K okay. would be the CDGT. We have a third. There, that's what they're the discussing. We yeah. haven't actually done it yet. I will make the motion when we start the meeting. CBDT would be a fourth, right? Yeah, okay. Well, when we get there, we'll okay. We'll get it. Try. That's fine. Okay. 
So the library is J 